All right, everyone. Welcome to the Rugby League History Channel. We hope you're all well and you're looking after yourselves. Tonight's video is going to be part four of me Rugby League Coffee Club series Q and A. This is where you, me followers on Instagram, ask me rugby league related questions, and I just give you my honest opinion and I answer them for you. I've done three of the Q and A sessions. There's a playlist, so if you're interested. Go and check out those uh, videos because I do answer quite a few questions. There's a few questions to go through tonight, so we'll, we'll get through into the first one. And this one's from Isaac Ritchie. Now, if you haven't already subscribed to Isaac Ritchie, go ahead. Just type in Isaac Ritchie on YouTube and I'm pretty sure it'll appear. And he asks, if you were to pick any player that played in the New South Wales Rugby League to play now, who would it be? I've actually thought about this question a bit and uh, I guess if I was to bring a player from the New South Wales Rugby League era back and bring him into the NRL 2020, I, I guess I'd go for one of the Rugby League Immortals, the pre-war or just after the, the war Immortals. So I'd probably go for either maybe Frank Burge or Dave Brown or maybe Norm Proven. You know, I'd, I'd like to just build a time machine, go back to the 1920s and 30s, abduct Frank Bage or Dave Brown, <laughs> go to the 1950s or 60s, get Norm Proven, and then take him forward in the 2020 and see, there's a field, go run on it. Because um, you read so many stories and you read about all the stuff that Dave Brown and Frank Bage did in particular. And uh, you just like to see how they, they'd go in, in today's game and, how they play and um, because obviously there was no video footage back then so you have to kind of use your imagination when you when you read all the stories about them so I'd probably go for one of those three players bring them into the 2020 season uh, the next question comes from Evane or Evanaf 04 and they ask rank these teams St George Manly and South well Currently, the way things are going, I'd probably put Manly at the bottom of that list, then St George, and then South. So that's how I'd rank them. And then he asks, him, well, he or she asks another question. Do you think Manly are a one-man team? No, I don't think they're a one-man team. I think they've got some other talented players, Cherry Evans in particular, but they certainly miss Tom Trevojevic. I think I'm guessing this is who, who they're um, aiming at here. Uh, I think without Tom Trevojevic, they lose a lot of their attack and they lose a lot of their spark. And they're certainly not the same team without him. But would I see that they're a wooden man team? No, I wouldn't. Um, the next question comes from Nino, who asks, are Parramatta still contenders? Uh, no, they're not contenders. There's only three clubs from what I've seen so far this year that I think can win the Premiership this year. That's Eastern Suburbs, Melbourne and Penrith. Um, Parramatta are a finals team and they deserve to be in the finals. But uh, the form over the last couple of months has shown that they're not really contenders. Even in the games that we've won, we haven't been that convincing. And um, I think if we were to play against a, a full-strength Eastern Suburb side or a full-strength Melbourne side, I don't think that we'd be winning those games. We have beat Penrith this year, and both of the teams were pretty much full-strength, but it was early in the year. Um, I guess tomorrow we'll find out where Parramatta is at when they play against Penrith. Uh, the next question comes from Nick from Australia. If you haven't already subscribed to Nick from Australia, go ahead. Uh, I think he's up to about 650 subscribers now. Um, he asks, what are your thoughts on the six again rule and the captain's challenge? Um, I, I don't mind the captain's challenge. I think the captain's challenge is all right. I mean, some teams have challenged and have, have got um, a decision right. With the six again rule, I don't really understand it. Even today with the with the West and South scheme, South have got the ball and they're just playing the ball and all you hear is a beep and then the crowd kind of goes, yeah, and then it's six again. But it's not explained why it's six again. And 
I've seen it in a lot of games. One team will just have the ball, and the next minute it'll just go beep, six again. But we're not explained why it was six again. Was there an infringement? Was someone offside? We, we don't know. I guess if your team is getting all the six agains, you wouldn't be complaining. But if you're on the, the wrong end of that six again, and you, you constantly hear a beep, beep, you'd be going, fuck, what, what's going on out there? Why is the other team getting six agains constantly and we're getting out? So um, I guess they've done it to speed up the game and to... Um, make the game faster and they get rid of sort of sort of teams trying to slow it down when they get the penalty kick and all that but um i think an explanation as to why a team gets six again would be nice excuse me for a moment i'm just gonna have a coffee because this is the coffee club mm. the next question comes from he naughty which team is the biggest underachievers this year in particular Biggest underachievers, um, definitely North Queensland, I'd say. Uh, I, I tip North Queensland to be in the finals this year. I thought that they had a, a good team on paper and they've been a real disappointment. And they've definitely underachieved this year. The, if you would have asked me at the start of the year, do you see North Queensland in the bottom three? I would have said, no, you're joking, aren't you? But... Obviously, they're in the bottom three at the moment and they've been really disappointed and they haven't, they've been a real big underachiever. Zach Radfar asks, three minutes left on the timer and you need to, a try to win. Who gets you home? 06 Lockyer or 09 Heen? Um, I definitely go for Jared Heen 2009. If you were watching rugby league back then or if you remember 2009 Jaredine was pretty much unstoppable he was the Dalian player of the year he come up with a few players which won Parramatta games this, uh, that year I know I might sound biased because I'm a Parramatta supporter but I think um, 2009 he was better than 2006 Lockyer that's just my opinion and I, I lived through it so I, I got to see Jared Heen do things week in, week out, which we haven't seen since. So I go with Jared Heen 2009. And then Evan asked another question. Do you like chicken or beef better? Um, definitely chicken. Definitely chicken. And if um, you're in Sydney, I, I recommend the place that you have to go to. It's called Charcoal Kingdom, Prince's Motorway Rock Deal. Go there. I used to go there once a week. I used to drive from Newtown and go to Rockdale just for the chicken. And um, I love my charcoal chicken. And de I'm definitely a chicken person over a beef person. South Sydney Till I Die asks, how far do you think South can go in the finals this year? I think they can potentially meet the second week of the finals. If they were to meet the preliminary final, that would be a big shock. But I, I think definitely... Whoever they play in the first week, they'll, they'll win. I don't see them winning in the second week. And then South City, till I die, asked another question. If South had Latrell Mitchell available, how far in the finals do you think South could go? Um, if Latrell Mitchell was there, I think that they probably could go further than second week. But at the start of the year, I, I tip South City to finish in the top four because on paper, they look quite good. And... You have to remember with South at the moment, Latrell Mitchell's out for the year. James Roberts is pretty much out for the year, or I think he's out until the finals. And they've had a few other injuries and a few other players ruled out for the year, like Braden Baines. He was one of the starting um, backs, and he's been replaced by Kari Allen. Um, so I think if Latrell Mitchell and James Roberts were there, that, that might change things a little bit. I think... At full strength, South Sydney could they, they could meet the preliminary final. Or I, I don't think that they'd win the Premiership, but at the start of the year, Adam top four. And um, losing the, the Trail Mitchell was a big blow. Um, I think they really missed him the other week against Melbourne. And it was a shame as well, because in that Parramatta match, I was, I was watching him play and I went, 
for the first time in a while, you can tell that Latrell Mitchell's actually happy and he's enjoying himself out there. And he looked really fit. He looked like he, he lost a bit of weight and he, he looked good. And the moment that all the stuff starts to go right for him, he gets ruled out for the year. And the final question comes from All Things Rugby League. And the ask starts on the Trebojevic blues. Um, I've never seen Ben Trebojevic play. I don't really know much about him, but everyone knows everything about Tom. And Jake is another fantastic player. I'm pretty sure if they stay at the club, they'll both retire as manly legends. They've still got a long way to go. Um, but I think the Trevojevic brothers are, are both really good players and they've proven it that Manly, they've proven it in the, in the New South Wales team and the Australian team as well. So anyways, that's me um, Rugby League Coffee Club Q&A video for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you liked the answers that I gave. If you, if you did, click that like button. And if you're enjoying the channel, Click that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. And click that notification bell so you get an email when I do a new video. Anyways, I'm going to get out of here and hope that you all have a, a good Friday tomorrow. And enjoy the rugby league and I'll catch you all later. Alright, tatty bye.